place and sure. and what I, I would just say instrumental band steel guitar guitar drums we get thrown into a almost a jazz category in some parts so I guess the alternative rock I mean it's not really I think it you know not trying to be but it kind of defies category. We started the band in Tucson in, I guess, uh, 1994. Mike and I happened to be roommates at the time. He had a different band, and uh, we weren't really starting it with the intent of, of having a, you know, a band that we were going to get a record deal and start putting out records or anything. It was more of a, uh, of a kind of a side project and a, a chance for us to, to play a different style of music and to, you know, explore having an instrumental band. And it was an opportunity for me to try and learn how to play steel. I'd been a guitar player and had seen people playing pedal steels and I was quite fascinated by the mechanics of it and the sound and uh, using the steel guitar as more of a voice over instrumental stuff rather than being a country style player. And so I started adding effects and discovering that it was a much more intriguing instrument for me to not try and just cop country licks or to sound like Buddy Emmons or Junior Brown and that uh, developing different sounds that I didn't hear coming out of other instruments. desert music or desert this or desert that and it's just like what are you talking about I mean it's we never really tried in the beginning to associate ourselves with this desert imagery and when you grow up in Tucson I mean there's just you're surrounded by the desert and it's certainly some sort of subconscious <laughs> effect that it has on things that I couldn't put my finger on and, and never really have been able to and no vocals there to, to tell you where you know where it's from it's just if people get that feeling when they cruise through Arizona or whatever it's the subconscious. In that area, it's it's really hot and there's not a lot to do. So you have a lot of free time and you have a lot of slow free time because it's really hot and you end up just, you know what I mean, you can't start a punk band in the middle of it. <laughs> you know, it's 120 degrees out. So. So we started in 94, recorded our first record for Sub Pop, a Shadow of Your Smile, in 95. And then in um, 96, we started recording Retrograde, and it uh, became apparent that uh, Joey and I were working on two different records. So he left uh, with John to go form Calexico, and I kept friends with Dean Martinez, and uh, moved to Los Angeles, and um, had a, a different lineup out there, and then ended up moving to Austin and uh, continuing here. The Cabinet of Dr. Calgary we, we first did five years ago at the same place, the Alamo Draft House, that we're doing it tonight. I had asked the owner of the theater, we were, you know, arranging to do a silent film, and I, I didn't know where to start with what would be appropriate for us to do, and, uh, and so he just suggested Calgary because he thought it would be perfect for us, and uh, so he gave me a copy of the film, and then we just, uh, yeah, wrote some music for it. Um, the songs that we had written five years ago for that have, have appeared on a few of our a few of our records, and uh, it was an inspiring you know point for us to fall with that. And we've done it done it a few times over the years since then. But uh, it was another you know thing that I felt really uh, compatible with um, musically, much like the Salt and Sea. I hadn't really heard about the Salt and Sea before. I'd, um, I mean, I'd heard the name and knew vaguely where it was, but, but had no idea of the, the history of it. And so when I was sent the, the video, for the, it was uh, you know, 
rather interesting to find all that out. And, and I, I think I went through the range of emotions when watching it and, and thinking, wow, you know, land's that cheap there. And, uh, yeah. and it, you know, ah, the water's really all right. And it seemed that there weren't, uh, you know, the people until the botulism <laughs> part of it. But I was actually thinking about buying a little plot of land there. Yeah, it's, in, it's an interesting project. I think it fits the band really well. The, all the people in the movie are really interesting. I, they almost seem like hired characters. Yeah, it, <laughs> almost <laughs> seems like, it almost seems like they're actors. Yeah, it's hard to believe that people would actually live near that, and, 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 and there really doesn't seem to be anything out there. <laughs> and the fact that it once used to thrive, it once used to be full of life and whatnot, and now it's kind of into de decay, but people seem to, you know, that's just where they live, so they're, they're going to be into yeah. it. I mean, I felt watching the movie the first time that, uh, Oh, I could really, I could really write music for this. I could, you know, it it, it was a, a nice fit for what we do and, and the the images and the, and the story. It um, felt natural to watch it and, and to want to write music. I mean, it was it was inspiring, and that's I think the most that you can ask for when you when you're trying to score something or, or write music. The music we play is kind of almost supporting, supports things well, like in the sense that it might be considered background music or whatever. It, it accents things well, and I think that, that that area of the country is very compatible with that because of the vastness and the openness and the people that live there. There's specific qualities to them that are, you know, it kind of leaves space for interpretation. I think leaving things open and not in entirely filling up all the spaces is the commonality between the music and the desert, you know. Not necessarily that it's twangy or, or cowboyish. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Like it just to leave space for things to come in or not come in. And it can be brutal too, like the desert life can be brutal and this music allows like a I think there's like an honest melancholy to it, but at the same time an openness, you know. So, you know, glimmer of hope after a dissonant passage or whatever. You know, the sunset at the end of the desert day can reinstill a little bit of hope in you. 